Commuting by bike in the U.S. is kind of a rare thing to do. With only about 1% of Americans commuting by bike, it really is seen as an activity that's mainly used for recreation or physical exercise. But there are a few places where the numbers of bike commuters are higher, with Portland, Oregon having around 4%, Minneapolis around 5%, and Eugene, Oregon around 8%. But there's one town in the U.S. that really stands out among the rest. About 15 miles to the west of Sacramento lies the town of Davis, California. With a population of around 60,000 people, it's not exactly a major town or city. But what is major about this town is that it has a modal share for bikes of over 20%. This high modal share is only about 5-10% to 10 lower than some of the really good cycling cities that you'll see around the world. And this has gotten the city of Davis the claim that it is the cycling capital of America. But how true is this claim really? Well, I said off to see for myself. So let's go check out Davis, California and see what America's best city for cycling has to offer. From the minute you enter the city of Davis, you start to notice that it isn't like other small cities and towns across the United States. The first thing that really took me back was how quiet and how peaceful it felt. One thing about cars is that they are incredibly loud. When cars get to speeds over 25 miles per hour, loudest noise that cars make besides their horns is from moving from friction with the road. The only real ambient sound that I could hear other than the birds was I-80, which was over a mile away. Cities really aren't that loud, just cars are. But how does one even get to Davis? While you can enter the city by driving, with the most common route being I-80, which can connect you to major cities both east and west of Davis, it's actually fairly easy to get to Davis without driving driving, unlike another city that claims to be great for cycling. Not only is there fairly frequent local bus service across Yolo County and to Sacramento and its airport, but the city itself has a stop for Amtrak. This stop services the state-sponsored Capital Corridor, which runs between San Jose and Sacramento, as well as two long-distance trains, those being the California Zephyr, which runs as far east as Chicago, and the Coast Starlight, which runs north to Seattle and south to Los Angeles. I chose to arrive in Davis by rail, and from the moment you get off the train, you can see the difference. For one, the station has a noticeable large amount of parking, and I don't mean for cars. While there is a small lot for car parking, a vast majority of the parking at the station that's actually close to the station is bike parking. In fact, this is something you'll notice all over the city of Davis. Practically everywhere has dedicated bike parking. While many cities have parking mandates for cars, Davis actually has mandates for bike parking, with different requirements for commercial, office, and residential buildings to have spaces for parking bikes. While this doesn't seem like a huge thing in terms of the actual conditions for riding, bike parking is actual infrastructure for bikes and other micromobility vehicles. In a vast majority of places around the U.S., bike riders usually lack any sort of parking for their bikes. This leads many people who need places to park their bikes to end up parking in areas that may not be secure for their bike or are illegal to park in. This required parking infrastructure in encourages that those who choose to commute by bike are going to have a place to park and validates people's choices to commute by bike or micromobility rather than driving. While parking your bike in Davis is pretty easy to do, it's not the only dedicated bike infrastructure that exists within the city. While many other cities around the U.S. in the mid-20th century were really committed to the bit of building as much car infrastructure as possible, the city of Davis had a different approach. In 1967, Davis became home to the very first modern concept of a bike lane in the U.S. And I'm not talking about some painted bike gutter that you'll see along most suburban roadways in North America. I'm talking about an actually protected bike lane that physically separated car traffic from bikes. This level of infrastructure wouldn't really make its way out of Davis until the 90s and 2000s. But regardless, it's quite a feat that this level of infrastructure originated from such a small California city. Davis is also home to a fairly vast bike trail network, allowing for fast speeds on bikes without having to worry about cars or pedestrians. While not every street has this level of separated, physically protected bike infrastructure, there's a lot that you can tell about these streets and the city design around these streets that really sets them apart from what you'll find in most of North America. In your average North American suburb, you're going to find that pretty much the entire built environment is going to be catered entirely towards the comfort of drivers, rather than the comfort or even the basic safety of getting around in other ways that aren't driving. A 
vast majority of North American side streets are built much wider than they should be to accommodate parking and often include random dead ends with no shortcuts to discourage walking between destinations. While the main thoroughfares are built with wide lanes to encourage drivers to go faster than what is safe for them or people outside of their own cars. Much of the built environment from this oversized sprawl of suburban tract housing all the way down to the setbacks of buildings encourage everyone to take a trip by driving and encourage drivers to operate at higher speeds than what is safe. While I could go off on why this mid-century idealistic vision of everyone having their own castle in the forest is a bad plan for communities and our planet, what the city of Davis has done with zoning in the city has really taken a shift away from this totally car-dependent philosophy and planned around a more multimodal use for its city streets. First, we have the setbacks of buildings. While out across much of the US, you'll see absolutely massive lawns in suburban homes, most homes in Davis have very little or almost no setback from the street. This combined with street trees that can provide shade and not only make it comfortable to be a pedestrian or cyclist by shortening walking distances and providing comfortable shade from the Central Valley sun, but this lack of setbacks and street trees narrows down the road for drivers. This causes drivers to slow down and become more cautious with their driving, making the streets safer for everyone. While safety is important for cycling, destinations are too. Not everybody is going to want to ride to the grocery store if it's a 15 mile round trip, but if it's a much more reasonable distance like 4 miles or 6 miles, then you'll get more people to consider doing it. This is where Davis also excels. It's actually very dense by American standards. With approximately 6,637 people per square mile, Davis is actually more dense than Sacramento right next to it, but it's also more dense than other major cities across the US, including Portland, Oregon, Atlanta, Georgia, and even Houston, Texas. This density is mostly created by its low sprawl and smaller home footprint, as well as its access to more options than just single-family detached homes. This lack of sprawl makes it much easier to walk or bike to more destinations within the city, reducing the need for driving trips. As well as this, Davis also has some mixed-use development within the city. This mixed-use development also helps to reduce driving trips by allowing some commercial zoning to be closer to the residential living spaces. Davis also does have some other benefits as to why bike ridership is so high that aren't really related to its infrastructure. For one, the city has a huge advantage when it comes to weather. California, and especially the central Central Valley, where Davis is located, is home to fairly temperate year-round temperatures that encourage cycling. Weather, however, is no excuse for good cycling numbers, as plenty of other areas with poorer weather still get high bike ridership from good infrastructure. Davis is also a college town, the home of UC Davis. This means that the population of the city is much younger, and not everybody has the income to own a personal vehicle and all of its costs that come along with it. This can also contribute to higher transit and cycling ridership, as seen in other college towns. But this isn't the end-all only excuse as to why ridership is so high in the city, as there are plenty of car-dependent college towns all across the U.S. While Davis has a very high modal share for biking within a city in the U.S., the city does face some downsides and it really isn't all sunshine and rainbows there. While many of the streets are quite safe for cycling, there are many thoroughfares in the city that still lack good protected bike infrastructure. This is especially apparent at intersections in the city which lack good curb protections that could not only benefit bikers, but pedestrians as well. Paint, unfortunately, isn't infrastructure, and many drivers still choose to ignore painted bike lanes, and with intersections being the point with the most conflicts on the road, it would be nice to see some actual, more physical infrastructure on the main streets in the city. Also, yeah, Davis is in California, so rent is going to be fairly expensive to actually live here. So, uh, yeah, California... Please get building more housing immediately. But you know what isn't as expensive as rent in California? My Patreon. Because for just a dollar a month, my patrons not only get content early, but they also get extra content, their name in the credits, and more. The link is down below. But let's conclude my thoughts on America's biking capital. So is Davis really a cycling capital? By US standards, I would say absolutely but by global standards, it does fall a little bit short. However, this is an incredible model for making our cities much better places to live, with mixed-use traditional zoning that helps build community and reduces car trips, to the higher variety of housing models within the city, to the street design encouraging drivers to be more cautious, to the actual dedicated bike infrastructure like trails that are safe for riders of all skill levels. Davis shows that it's not just the big cities that can be multimodal, but that's 
smaller cities and towns across North America can do it, and that prioritizing pedestrians and cyclists over cars can make our cities and towns of all sizes, in all areas, all across this continent, better places to live. But how do you feel about Davis, California? Do you think that it's America's cycling capital? What plans do you want your city or town to learn from Davis? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, and subscribe. I'd like to thank Tony Stunts and John Shukites, as well as all of my other patrons for their generous support of this channel. Without their support, I wouldn't be able to make videos like this. And if you want to support the channel or get extra benefits like extra content, early access to videos, your name in the credits, and more, check out the link down below. Also while you're down there, you can find links to my other socials. I post extra content and updates there. Folks, thank you so much for watching this video. Your support has been insane. 10,000 subscribers. I, I can't even believe it. Thank you so much for your support, and as always, I'll see y'all on the next one.